My name is Christine Mai. I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist at Massachusetts General Hospital. I'm here at the intensive care nursery with Dr. George Gregory, who is one of the founders and discoverers of neonatology here at UCSF. He's also most noted for his works on continuous positive airway pressures. Dr. Gregory, who's a professor emeritus at the University of California, San Francisco, helped discover, develop technologies in neonatology in the intensive care unit. When I was a resident and was on OB, I somehow ended up going over to the nursery every day and looking around and seeing what was going on there. When there was a baby being born who was going to have serious respiratory problems, we went to the delivery room uh, with, a, with a grass recorder because there were no monitors for babies at that time uh, and used that grass recorder to measure the blood pressure, heart rate, electrocardiogram, uh, inspiratory expiratory pressures and could therefore measure and tidal volumes and therefore could measure a lot of pulmonary mechanics in these babies. Nobody knew how to treat these babies who had severe island membrane disease. And what was there to do? And the mortality of an 1800 gram baby was about 50% at that time. Well, we understood what the disease was. Mary Ellen Avery had clearly pointed out that this was due to a lack of surfactant. Bill Tooley had gone to Singapore where they had 25,000 deliveries a year and were able to study uh, pulmonary function and cardiovascular function in babies with island membrane disease. And out of that came the understanding that part of the problem was that they had decreased pulmonary blood flow. So they had pulmonary hypertension to some degree. So when I went up there, we weren't doing very well. I was looking for some other way to, to treat these babies, knowing that their, their major problem was atelectasis. Well, it turns out that there was a paper published from South Africa in which they looked at the effects of grunting respirations. So babies could, would be going, oh, 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 on every expiration in order to maintain an FRC. And they were able to prove that. And they put an endotracheal tube in the baby and showed that the baby didn't do very well. That their blood gases got worse, their oxygenation got worse. And they took the tube out and let them go back to grunting, and they were just fine. They got better. I read that article, and I said, well, why didn't they just put positive pressure on that at the end of expiration? And that should maintain the FRC, which would be opened on inspiration, and that it should get better. Well, that night I had the opportunity to do that. The brother of one of our my fellow faculty members here uh, came in with what turned out to be very bad hyaluronic membrane disease. And so I intubated his trachea, put on uh, about eight millimeters of mercury and expiratory pressure, and over the next couple of minutes, his PO2 went from 30 millimeters of mercury to about 80 millimeters of mercury, and over the next hour, it went to 230 millimeters of mercury. And then we were able to progressively come down on the inspired oxygen, and after a few days, we started reducing the pressure, and then we were able to wean this baby, and the baby survived, and has gone on to run a uh, computer company in Japan. So, and he was an all-American soccer player. So I don't think he was too messed up by what we did to him. And then uh, we then went on to treat other babies. And we found that we could even get babies who weighed a thousand grams to survive by using this. And so that was the beginning of continuous positive airway pressure. 